Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. All right, let's take a look at every Premier League club's current manager and the biggest managerial bullet they dodged. I'm going to take a look at a job offer that would have threatened to chew their career to pieces had they taken it. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Mikel Arteta, Newcastle 2019. Yeah, Mikel Arteta is only five minutes into his managerial career and has already lifted more trophies than Rachel Pochettino has in over a decade of bastard management. Anyway, last year when Rafa Benitez finally walked out of Newcastle, leaving the club to hand the job to every man with a working pulse. Honestly, the number of people who rejected Newcastle last summer, even Sam Allardyce was saying no. That's like being turned down by the town drunk who eats pigeons outside the local subway. Anyway, Arteta, a number two at Man City, waiting for the right job, clearly thought that working on a shoestring budget for an uninterested owner trying to sell the club was about as appealing as licking a homeless man's armpit. Honestly, if Arteta's first management job was the pressure cooker of Newcastle's poison chalice, being forced to coach the likes of Christian Atu and Paul Dummett, placing your job security in the hands of Joe Linton, oh, he'd have been the next Remy Guard, Aston Villa, Dean Smith, Rotherham, 2015. Okay, let's be honest, Dean Smith is a lucky man to have gone from Walsall to the Premier League within five years. He could very easily still be slumped in League One, but even worse, having had his career chewed up and forced fed back down his throat. That move to Brentford in 2015 basically changed the landscape of this guy's career. Had he instead moved to Rotherham, oh good Moses, they had just pulled off Championship Survival by the width of a hamster's nipple, were rock bottom of the league and in search of a miracle when they approached Smith in October 2015. I'm sorry, this is a championship relegation battle he would have lost, and suddenly a sacked manager in League One, the chances of him winding up at Aston Villa after that, there's more chance of me growing a female uterus. Brighton, Graham Potter, nobody. Okay, unfortunately for Graham Potter, the man has hasn't exactly turned down a bunch of clubs. The man spent eight years out in Sweden. Most teams didn't have a clue who or what he was. They'd probably assume he was just another figment of JK Rowling's imagination. And the only two job offers he was offered, he took. So yeah, sorry Potter, nobody wanted you. Burnley, Sean Dyche, Everton 2017. Yeah, remember when Sean Dyche was the red-hot favourite to succeed Ronald Koeman at Everton back in late 2017? He had the media effectively willing him to leave Turf Moor to finally take the big step up, the next evolution of his career. But him showing Burnley the same loyalty they showed him after relegation basically saved his management career. I'm sorry, but had he stepped head first into the meltdown pit of despair Glisson Park with a completely unbalanced squad, I promise you he would currently be unemployed. Let's not forget his Route 1 style of football isn't dissimilar to Sam Allardyce at all, who was chased out of Everton after five goddamn months. Chelsea, Frank Lampard, Ipswich Town 2018. Oh lads, Frank Lampard must thank Christ he rejected Ipswich back in 2018. He was interviewed twice for the job and considering in management terms he was an unemployed novice, a championship gig in a big club might have been tempting. But because he wasn't born with a ham sandwich lodged in his brain, he saw the fact that they had no transfer budget and with a laughably bang average squad, he could probably smell the stench of an upcoming relegation. Had he gone there, he wound up sacked after relegation to League One with any shred of managerial potential essentially ripped to shreds. In management terms, he'd currently be on par with Sol Campbell, so the chance of him getting the Chelsea job after that no, no chance in hell. Crystal Palace, Roy Hodgson, Norway 2009. Back in 2009, Roy Hodgson was about to hit the peak of his career. Sure, he was almost as old as time itself, but he just saved Fulham for relegation and was about to reach a Europa League final before getting both the Liverpool and England jobs. This is a guy who'd spent about 15 years travelling the world, stuck in footballing wilderness with obscure jobs like Grasshoppers, Copenhagen and Finland. So him accepting the Norway international manager's job when offered in 2009 would just be him returning back to the football wasteland. There'd be no big job offers, no World Cups, probably not even another Premier League job again in his life. Everton, Carlo Ancelotti, Aston Villa 2011. Oh lads, Aston Villa in 2011. At least they were ambitious. Carlo Ancelotti had just been binned by Chelsea for the shocking crime of finishing second in the league. What an almighty sin. Never mind losing his job, he should have spent the weekend being chained to a bathtub and living off cups of his own sweat. Isn't that right, Roman? Listen, the world knew it was a disgraceful sacking, but Aston Villa trying their luck, thinking they had a realistic chance of appointing him. Oh good lord. Villa just finished ninth in the league. We're selling their best players every summer. Ancelotti went on to spend the decade drowning in trophies with PSG, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. Had he wound up slumming with annual relegation scraps to Aston Villa. Oh, good Christ, he'd be dragging his football legacy through a swamp of dirty toilet water. Fulham, Scott Parker, Bournemouth 2020. Okay, to be fair, Scott Parker hasn't been a manager long enough to reject many football clubs. I suppose Bournemouth were apparently interested in giving him the job when Eddie Howe left, but it wouldn't make sense. Quitting Craven Cottage after spending seven years there as an employee, after guiding them back to the Premier League, to then take a championship job at a club about to sell half the squad, it wouldn't really make sense at all. Leeds, Marcelo Bielsa, Girona 2019. Remember when Marcelo Bielsa was offered the Girona job last summer? They'd just been relegated from La Liga and so thought Bielsa was the perfect choice to get them straight back up. Now, he might have been, but let's be honest, that club might have money, but they have the footballing history of a wet paper toilet. I think guiding a club like Leeds United, a club soaked in history, legacy, and worldwide support, dragging them back into the Premier League after a 16 year wait, because of the top flight spotlight and the size of the club, Bielsa's stock is probably the highest it's been since he quit 
Atletic Bilbao in 2013. Christ, only last week he was linked with Barcelona. Had he wound up in the second division with Lodi Girona, half the football world would probably have forgotten who the hell he was. Leicester, Brendan Rodgers, Aston Villa 2018. Yeah, sorry Aston Villa fans, but yeah, you're back on the list again. We all know Brendan Rodgers was offered the chance to quit Celtic for Villa Park back in October 2018. Lads, Villa were stuffed halfway down the championship. Had Rodgers wound up there, it would have killed his career in English football. Let's not forget, he was seen as a Premier League joke. The lasting memories of him in this country was of guiding Liverpool to an embarrassing 6-1 defeat at Stoke. He's rebuilt his reputation at Leicester, but trying to impose his ball playing progressive football on a desperate championship and table team, scrapping four points? He'd probably been sacked within 18 months. Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp, Man United 2013. Okay, Canada, Man United fans. Yes, I realise the Old Trafford job is one of the biggest on planet Earth, and the pinnacle for many managers' careers. But I'm sorry, Jurgen Klopp turning down Old Trafford in 2013 was the best decision he ever made. Nobody was going to adequately follow in the footsteps of Sir Alex Ferguson. Given an ageing squad, this was an impossible job. Even at Liverpool, the rebuild job took time. Something an all Man United manager has been given this decade. I'm sorry, but Jose Mourinho had a stronger CV than Klopp, and he was only given two years on the job. I promise you, if Klopp had been appointed in 2013, he'd have been sacked by 2015, and would probably just have wound up back at Dortmund with his tail stuck between his legs. Man City, Pep Guardiola, Chelsea 2012. Yeah, remember when Chelsea were champions of Europe for 2012? It was enough to entice Eden Hazard to the club. It wasn't enough to get Pep Guardiola through the door, though. Listen, Roman Abramovich had a borderline obsession with the Barcelona coach, and with good reason. But thankfully for Pep, he rejected the Stamford Bridge gig, probably because he knew it would have torn his career to shreds. This is one of the only top-class managers in the world who have never been sacked. Had he got a Chelsea and had an aging, inconsistent squad, a team who eventually turned on Mourinho, he'd have been binned after less than three years as well. Man United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Aston Villa 2012. Yeah, sorry Villa, but come on, managing Villa during the last decade, it was probably about as much fun as cramming your ball back into a pencil sharpener. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was close to accepting the Villa job in 2012. Oh, it would have been horrific. That mind-numbingly boring Paul Lambert reign of terror that effectively killed his career, that would have been given to Solskjaer. Sure, I know the Norwegian managed to get relegated with Cardiff and still got the Man United job, but I think failing at a bigger club like Villa would have been a bigger blotch on his record. And no, probably wouldn't have wound up at Old Trafford after that. And judging by the list of former Villa management flops, it would have probably been Ipswich, Egypt, or the goddamn MLS. Or in Tim Sherwood's case, the bastard couch. Newcastle, Steve Bruce, Newcastle, 2004. Yeah, one of Steve Bruce's biggest regrets was turning down the Newcastle job in 2004, in favour of remaining at Birmingham City. Oh no, Bruce, you were right not to take that job. Sure, inheriting the game from Rafa Benitez was tough, but replacing Sir Bobby Robson, he'd have absolutely no chance. At least with Benitez, all he had to do was just finish mid-table to match his record, but Sir Bobby had just been sacked for finishing fifth in the league. And who here thinks Bruce is capable of finishing inside the Premier League top six. Anyone? Considering the Newcastle job killed Graham Souness' career, Bruce should be thankful he didn't accept that poison chalice. Sheffield United, Chris Wilder, Sunderland 2018. Yeah, this would be the worst career decision in the entire list. Back in the spring of 2018, and with Sunderland stuck in a championship relegation battle under Chris Coleman, Chris Wilder was sounded out as the favourite to replace him. But that was the odds on Bucky's favourite. Since then, Wilder has got the blades into the Premier League top half. Had he swapped all that for the sinking ship of Sunderland, it would honestly be the worst career decision ever. Southampton, Ralph Hasenhutl, Bayern Munich 2018. Now, you might think Ralph Hasenhutl being offered the Bayern Munich job in January 2018 would have been great for his career. Sorry lads, but no. Sure, they're the kings of Europe now, but they're onto their sixth coach in four years. The likes of Neil Kovac and Carlo Ancelotti were sacked. What chance would Hassel Houghton have had? Tottenham, Josie Mourinho, Tottenham 2007. Yeah, remember Josie Mourinho was offered the Tottenham job in 2007, just days after his Chelsea exit? This had the potential to destroy his career. He instead took the Inter Milan job, where he won the treble, which was probably the greatest achievement of his career to put himself back amongst Europe's elite. Had he succeeded Martin Yolo, he'd have spent his late 40s stuck in mid-table battles. The likes of Darren Bent, Aaron Lennon, Michael Dawson, Really? Was he going to win anything with them? Had he gone to White Hart Lane, a team who sold their best players every summer, Christ, he'd have just wound up a mid-table manager. West Brom, Slava Bilic, West Ham 2008. Yeah, I know Slava Bilic wound up at West Ham eventually, but when he was off the job in 2008 while Croatia boss, he was right to turn it down. The Hammers were a complete mess, with bankrupt owners steamrolling their way to relegation. If Bilic wanted to have his best player sold and wind up with a relegation splattered across the CV, then great, but I'm pretty sure he didn't. West Ham, David Moyes, Newcastle 2006. Let's be honest, lads, David Moyes' management legacy will be those 11 years spent in Everton. Where don't get it wrong, he did a damn good job, but Newcastle wanted him in 2006, and Newcastle who were about to be sold to Mike Ashley within a year. Considering that man fired Sam Allardyce within six months, I'm pretty sure he'd have also chucked Moyes on the scrap heap as well. Especially when the Scotsman realised he wasn't able to coach a defence filled with circus clowns. God only knows where his management career would have wound up after that. Wolves, Nuno Espirito Santo, Everton 2017. Listen, Nuno Espirito Santo has done an outstanding job at Wolves, confirming himself to be one of Europe's greatest young coaches. Had he left Malinu for Everton back in late 2017 though, with Wolves top of the championship, he'd have just been the next Marco Silva. The Toffees would have been him after less than 18 months, leaving Santos' career face down in a ditch. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.